IL. IL would then produce current RF, that then would give us I R J. Correct? So the main magnetic field produced by the field current, the secondary magnetic field produced by the armature is now going to interact with each other, setting the armature into motion. And you are going to get power out of there. When you look at this circuit diagram, there's one symbol that is missing. So the operation of the motor is not dependent on the presence of EMF. What is it dependent on? The supply voltage V. But because Faraday was able to prove to us that whenever any conductor or coil rotates inside a magnetic field, there's guaranteed to be an EMF induced. This we call back EMF, counter EMF, or self-induced EMF. <laughs> so what is this EMF then? This EMF E makes the motor to be self-regulated. Now, what do we mean by self-regulating? In other words, it is going to control the speed of the motor. How does it do that? If I the speed and the, the control, the amount of current drawn from the supply. So if I'm going to look at the formula, the formula says E for any motor is V minus IA bar. Is that correct? Remember that this DC motor can operate by simply applying a potential difference of a voltage. But we notice that according to, uh, according to Faraday's law, because the conductors of the armature are rotating inside the magnetic field, we cannot avoid this EMF from the EMF. So therefore, from this formula here, I'm going to make I armature, something of a formula, which is going to be terminal voltage minus E divided by I. Is that correct? Now, if you look at all the examples, in technology N3, techniques N4, techniques N5 and N6. You will find in a typical example, R shunt might be 100 ohm, 110 ohm, 120 ohm, whatever. But resistance armature is always a tiny value, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, whatever. Right? So, from this example here, we are going to say, at starting. What does at starting mean? We have gone to the power source and we switched on. Because the armature has not yet begun to rotate, can you see that the EMF is zero? Is that correct? Because according to Faraday, the three components we need for the EMF is a magnetic field, we need a coil of wire, and we need rotation. So at starting the rotation is zero, therefore the EMF is zero. So therefore the formula then becomes I armature start equals to terminal voltage V minus zero divided by R. So if I look at a typical machine, if we take a motor that say supplied at 200 volts, 200 minus zero divided by the resistance of the armature which is zero comma two, and that is going to give us something like a thousand. Correct? Do you think it's possible for us to design a circuit to carry thousand MPs? So that is the reason as to why we have to bring additional resistance from outside into the armature circuit. But if we make that a permanent connection, the motor will become very sluggish, it will take a long time before it reaches full load speed. So that is the reason why we have a resistance start. Do you know how to draw the circuit diagram? Do you want me to draw it or is it okay? Right, so the function of the resistance start, it's a manually operated start. We take the spring-loaded starting arm from the off position, 
we bring it to position number one. Current then flows through all the elements, flows through the armature and goes back. So what have we done? We have increased the value of the resistance of the armature. What happens to the current? Is because the current is very small, the motor just begins to rotate. But because the rotor is beginning to rotate, can you see the EMF is beginning to depend? So as you exclude, each time you move the arm, you exclude the resistance of the armature, you will find automatically the EMF. EMF begins to grow. So when we say it is self-regulating, it helps to limit the high starting current. That's it.